All right, eight or ninth, eighth graders, lesson 59, experimental probability. And here we're going to discuss uh, at the beginning two types of probability. And the two types we want to discuss are theoretical probability and experimental probability. Theoretical probability is more of the type of probability that we're going to do just by thinking about it. We're going to think about what the probability should be. Experimental is we're going to try it out. It's kind of like the real probability. So, for example, if I were to be talking about theoretical probability and I want to talk about flipping a coin, uh, theoretically, uh, I should get heads 50% uh, of the time or one half, one out of every two. Whereas an experiment, I might get heads and then heads and then heads again and then tails and then heads and then tails and then tails and then heads and then tails and then tails. So here if we take a look at our experiment here now, I've got one, two, three, four, five heads. And that's out of ten. And tails there obviously would be five. So our experiment worked out. We, we came out with 50%. However, if we had stopped the experiment after only five, our experimental probability for heads would have been four out of five, and our probability for tails would have been one out of five. So in this situation, this is 80%, and this is only 20%, whereas we would expect to see 50%. So, what does this mean? It means that experimental probability, if you only do a few experiments, you could end up with a very skewed probability, 80 to 20%. In this case, you say, well, you're definitely going to get heads more of the time than you get tails. Whereas the more experiments you do, the longer you go, the closer you should get to this number up here. Um, we can... We can talk about that again and uh, maybe use basketball sports or ba baseball. Maybe uh, a basketball shooter is, say, a 75% uh, free throw shooter. However, in this game, we're going to say he's going to shoot uh, eight free throws. He stops up the free throw line and he hits the first and he hits the second and he Later in the game, he hits the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. So we would take a look at this as we're going along. We'll say, look, this guy's shooting 100%. He's shooting above average. So the experimental probability is much higher than the theoretical. But then when he gets real tired at the end of the game, he misses those two. And now he's back at 75%, which is what his average should be. So we never want to just look at, at a few experiments. We want to do as many experiments as possible and usually that should get us closer and closer to the theoretical probability of what they should do. All right, let's take a look at example one. We've got a softball player. They get 21 hits in 60 at-bats and they're asking express the probability the player will get a hit in her next at-bat as a decimal number. So in that case, we would do 21 divided by 60, put a decimal here. 60 wouldn't go into 21, but it would go. And here, 3 times, and that will be 180. Subtract that, that'll be 30. Add another 0 here. 60 will go into there uh, 5 times. So we would say... 0 0.35. Now, those of you that know baseball, you might say that's not how it's expressed. In baseball or softball, we always use three decimal places. In fact, in baseball or softball, they wouldn't even include this zero right here. They would just include the decimal point and say this person's batting 350 or 0.350. In example two, then, it says a salesperson distributed free samples at the mall. 50 shoppers accepted the samples and 30 did not. What is the probability that a shopper at the mall will accept the salesperson's samples? Well, 50 people accepted, 30 did not. 
Why do I need to know both numbers? Because knowing both numbers will get me my denominator, 50 out of 80. Now I can decrease that or lower it, and I say five out of every eight people in the mall will probably accept uh, this salesperson's samples. All right, in example three here. All right, example three uh, presents us with an interesting situation we're going to talk about here about flights. And what they're doing here is, you see above that the blue box, for example, three, you see the word simulate. And simulate means just to, to we aren't actually going to do it, we're going to pretend it wouldn't be uh, practical for us to actually uh, hop in an airplane, fly to one place, and then fly to another place, and fly to another place to actually try it out. Whereas if I was doing uh, heads versus tails, well, that's real easy. I just need one coin. I can usually find that anywhere. But to fly my own jet airplane and fly it around to, to try a bunch of things to see if uh, see if it works out, well, that'd be expensive and, and difficult to do. So I'm not going to uh, try that. So that's where we come up with uh, our own spinner here. So to try this out about my airplane, since I don't have my own, I'm going to make a spinner. And uh, past information tells me that two-thirds of the time I am on schedule. So that's what's important to be able to, to simulate something is we, we do have to have a little bit of past information about something. And in this case, I know two-thirds of the time, maybe uh, American Airlines is, is, is on time. So A says, how could the experimental probability be found? Uh, well, I would say by a uh, spinner. Um, but also it could be found, I could go online and I could look up some times for uh, when... Uh, flights arrived in Madison, Wisconsin, or Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Where they, but that takes a lot of time. It's kind of impractical. So uh, that would take a long time to conduct. So it's impractical. That's what I'd say for A. For B, how could the spinner at the right be used to simulate? Well, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to throw the spinner uh, because I want to know Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I'm going to spin the spinner and... Uh, I'll write down the answer, what I get down in each of these, either on time or not on time, and then that will give me a uh, experimental probability. So that would help us to uh, simulate uh, that experiment. Um, and so we can do that. Is it going to be realistic? Hopefully it will be but we'll have to see. All right, uh, that should do it for today. Uh, you can get started on your lesson.